I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 30th of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life, living in Nicaragua. And after yesterday, we did a tour of an apartment in the San Mateo neighborhood of Leon. And today we're gonna continue on looking at a house in the San Mateo neighborhood of Leon. So we're gonna get to that right after the bump. Welcome to the show and this morning uh, that I'm doing the recording, we have a power outage and so I'm taking advantage of the chance to come out and do a video earlier in the day. It's a planned power outage. So I know some people have complained that we're not transparent enough about the power outages. I try to report every single one of them so you guys really have a good feel of what it's like. We've talked about how they're generally short, they're often planned uh, and, and you really don't have to worry about them too much and they're short enough that it's generally pretty easy to mitigate them. Today is on the longer side, but it's not super long. Today it is a five hour planned outage. We're about halfway through it at the time that I'm recording this. It was scheduled, it's on the website. So here we have uh, two power companies, Dis Norte in the north of the country, Dis Sur in the south, uh, that's Norte and Sur mean north and south in the name, and it's basically distribution north and distribution south, and uh, they have on their website what the planned schedules are so you know ahead of time, if you're paying attention, uh, that you're going to have an outage. And so today we knew from 7.30 in the morning until half past noon, we're gonna have an outage. And of course here noon is when the sun is overhead, not like in the US. And uh, so it's that easy. We have a five hour planned outage. And if you wanna walk outside, you can see them putting the poles up just outside. So it's new poles going up here. It's actually very localized. It is only the power run coming past here uh, and going on towards the beach. So it's a, a very small number of communities in a very limited population that are impacted today, but they have it all up on the website. It's all scheduled so we know what's going on. And there's different parts of the city are having maintenance today. So lots of people in Leon are experiencing the five hour maintenance outage, but it's five hours here, five hours there. If we wanna go up the street and get coffee, no problem. If we wanna go work around the corner, no problem. Any of those kinds of things, easy. Our, our beach has a generator, so they've got power uh, all throughout the day. So it's really not that bad. But some people are like a five hour outage, that's huge. Well, apparently they're not American because when I was in the US, our outages were days and unscheduled and right, you just you never knew what you were going to do and your food spoiling and all that. Five hour outages are, oh, you just have to move a few things around or maybe run up the street to work or whatever. It rarely causes a significant impact as long as you know it's maintenance, you know it's only going to be about five hours. You, you can plan around it, right? So it's, it's a different experience. So take that as you want. If my, my take on it is that five hour planned outages fall on the short side. My American experience was uh, both living in New York and in Texas that I would uh, growing up and in the weeks before we moved here and in the last few weeks, right? Those areas experience weeks or even months of power outages at a time for giant swaths of population, millions of people. Um, and so, that's something we haven't experienced here at all. And the outages that we do have are much more planned and straightforward and it's just it's just been very good. Um, but we do have these little blips all the time, so we're always thinking about it. So that being said, one of the things we do to mitigate that is like I'm doing my recordings this morning so that we are ready and don't have to worry about that. And Paul and Dominica immediately took the car and ran to Managua, so they're spending the day shopping, one, where there's power, and two, simply making use of the day when they don't have power here to do something else. So they're, uh, they were planning on going on Thursday, I believe. They just moved that up always be ready and boom, they're doing the shopping. It's a completely useful day. We actually have some shopping to do here for someone who is just moving into town. One of my viewers uh, has moved in and is uh, looking at uh, furniture and, and appliances and stuff today. So that again, we can do where there's power right in the city uh, and get all that done in a practical sense while the power is out here. So. It, you know, it's easy. But that being said, uh, Paul and Dominica are shopping for a generator for the house. These outages could potentially pose a little bit of a risk because we work from here. Uh, so it kind of makes sense for us to potentially have a generator just to keep these outages from being a real problem. It's not a big problem. We have batteries. So like right now I'm charging phones and stuff. We've been out for hours and I'm charging things. So it's 
it's not a major problem, but I'm not firing up the air conditioning units or anything like that off of the batteries. They're not that big of batteries. Uh, but so we've, we've mitigated from a technology standpoint that we're still online. We're still communicating with the office. I'm still charging my phone. No, nothing like that. We don't have any danger problems. And of course, again, I can walk to a cafe in an outage like this. So I think it's good to have that transparency. I agree with the people who say that we should have all this transparency. I think we've had it and continue to have it. Every time we have an outage, I talk about it on the show and talk about how we're mitigating it and how long it is and compare it to the US. So we're, we're covering that. Um, and it pretty consistently remains that the outages are short. There are many that are under a minute, maybe two minutes. And there are a few like this that are a few hours, but they're almost always planned and very reliably back online pretty quickly. So that's that's our foundation for the morning. That's where we're getting started with the power. I'm going to grab some coffee and we're going to get on with our uh, our talk about this house in the neighborhood of San Mateo. If you haven't seen yesterday's episode, I encourage you to go back and watch that and give it a like. Of course, in that episode, we visit the San Mateo neighborhood as well. We show that and we look at a two bedroom, one bath apartment for $180 a month that was available in that neighborhood. It was taken, it is no longer available, but we were able to film it before uh, anyone moved in. So we're grateful for that. And I think it was a really great example. We were absolutely in love with that apartment as far as the combination of price and location and and the build of the apartment right solid concrete great location just everything came together that at 180 dollars a month if you were looking for a two bedroom it's important to know i said this yesterday if you were looking in casa leon you would be getting roughly the same for the same price the same two bedroom one bath basically the same square footage uh, in casa leon which is a development community on the southeast side of the city going on the road towards managua uh, you would get um, more or less the same front yard, maybe just the tiniest bit more, one to two meters more, and uh, square meters more. And the backyard would definitely be bigger. Your car area would be bigger. But they'd be relatively useful in the same way. It is true. If you're in Casa Leon and had something at that price point, you would have enough backyard that you could have a private garden, like a little flower garden. You could put a barbecue out there. There's a few things you could do that would work and, and you would enjoy your backyard. If you really wanted to entertain in your backyard, you could pull it off. I feel in the apartment yesterday, and you can see the video for yourself, I feel that that would not be plausible. The backyard space was really utilitarian, meant for airflow and for doing laundry. If you were going to try to do something beyond that, possible, but it would be a significant struggle. If you didn't want space for a laundry, sure, you could do a garden. If you didn't want anything, you just wanted to put down something and, and have a table and chairs, absolutely you could do it. But it's very limiting. The space was, was quite small. Pleasant, but small. So Castle Leon is going to get you a little bit more in that vein, uh, but the the apartment here uh, gives you uh, a private gated, very small space in, in the uh, apartment building area. So you, you gain a little bit in that privacy, you give up a little bit in the open backyard space. The house dimensions are roughly identical to the apartment dimensions for the dollar amount, about 180. You can get a similar layout, but a little bit smaller for as low as 150, about 145, absolute minimum, um, over in Casa Leon. So you have, you have a way to save money there, but you're not going to get as much. Like, like your sizes for the dollar amount are going to be roughly similar. The advantage in Casa Leon is big, sprawling community full of uh, very similar houses in a big area out in the country. So more air, easy access to Managua. Here in San Mateo, where we're looking at the houses yesterday and today, uh, you're in a community right next to the, high, the private high school zone and one of the private colleges, universities, uh, that are very very uh, high end, right? So you're getting a great community of uh, potential students who've traveled from around the country to attend these and a great mix of families and especially professors and other support staff who live in the area to work at those those institutions. So you have a really good community from a who lives there, who wants to live there because it's so close. Um, and that also makes it very safe. And you have some nice like small pulperias and stuff. What you don't have is restaurants or anything like that in the neighborhood that we found, um, which I've, I've done some episodes on San Mateo in the past. It just, it's too sleepy. Uh, so it doesn't have that, but you can get to the Mercadito in about two blocks. So it's super fast. At some point, I'll do some some uh, kind of connecting San Mateo to the world kind of stuff. And uh, if you want to get to restaurants and that kind of stuff in Sutiava, you're only looking at a trip. That is a butterfly flying around my face. Uh, you're only looking at a trip of uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes on foot, three to four minutes in a car, right? You, going through Mercadito always takes two minutes just to get through the market itself in a car. So that slows things down. If you were looking to go to the beach, if you were uh, wanted to live in San Mateo and wanted to make it a 
a, like a destination for going to the beach, but you didn't want to live on the beach itself. And I didn't say this in the video yesterday. This is really well worth mentioning. That apartment that we showed yesterday and the house, because these are right next to each other, uh, that we're going to show today, these are two blocks or less. It's almost exactly two blocks to the beach bus origination point in Mercadito. So two blocks, you simply go out and you're on the main road and then it's to the east a block and a half. So you get a little bit to the end then a block and a half. All in front of a, a big school, right? So this is a super safe zone, packed full of people, 24 seven, there's never a time where there's not people out there watching businesses because the businesses don't close at night. They have security guards who keep them on with the lights and just if you want to buy something in the night, you can, no one does, but you can because there's security watching them to keep them open. So this is very, very safe. And the beach bus starts from Mercadito and just runs to Ponoloya, Las Bonitas, and back to Mercadito in a loop all day long uh, from something like six o'clock in the morning, don't quote me on that, until something like six or seven at night. So, and that is somewhere between 15 and 20 cents to take the bus to the beach. So this is a spot where you could live in the city and be at the origination point for the bus. You can live anywhere towards the beach from that and the bus will stop for you, but it's like, ah, you gotta wave down the bus. Like it's a very different experience. Starting at the origination point, you just walk over there, there's a bus sitting there, you just get on the bus and wait until it takes you to the beach. So if you want to have the beach access, but you want to live off beach and have city access within walking distance, the San Mateo neighborhood is really ideal for that because you get this upgraded non-barrio feel uh, in a really safe area with the school feeling and, and just really nice houses. But you're right next to the Barrio Mercadito, which is excellent for low-cost uh, vegetables and fruits and all that kind of stuff and basic shopping minutes away. And then the city buses go through there and will take you into the city if you want public, but you can also walk and then the bus to the beach right there. So there's a convenience factor for people interested in the beach but don't actually want to pay for beachfront. That's pretty incredible. So when we show you the house today, all of this is a preface for the house today. When we show you the house today, this is a three bedroom house for $200 a month that is directly accessible to the beach while being also directly accessible to the city all at the same time. At that price to be able to go to the beach any time except for late at night for essentially free is a really big deal. This is a spot where you could live kind of outside the city with that beach access and you have no need for a car for most people. $200 a month with amazing public transportation and market access. What you don't have is a local grocery store. The local, the, the nearest like full blown grocery store, American style, right? Like full supermarket is La Colonia in Saragossa. Is it walkable? Absolutely. It is a long walk and you would not want to do it carrying groceries. But if you were simply going back and forth by a taxi or by public transportation, people do that all the time. It is doable. It is not, it's, you don't have a walking uh, supermarket right next to your house like we did when we lived in La Borio. We were able to walk to that same La Colonia uh, and carry our groceries much of the time. Like me and the, the kids would go and we would walk back with our groceries. So that's a difference. That's a negative, but in general, this is a really desirable neighborhood because of that. And when you see the prices of what you get for a standalone house, I think it's gonna be pretty mind blowing. All right, we're gonna head into the house. First, this is the street that we're on. This is just one street south of the apartments that we looked at. Last time we have a Marcella for scale, we're gonna head in. Now this is a very walled off and gated front little private area. You got a little patio out front, little spot for the car on the left. Very good for having a place to hang out and be outside, but very private, but decent views. Like it's really not bad. Good windows on the front, we're coming in. Now the, the bedrooms are on the left. We've got the normal layout, same as we've had in basically every standard house we've looked at with the living space in a row and the private spaces on the left. This is a design we're just gonna see over and over again, very common. We have a backyard here. Not huge, but much bigger than we saw in the apartment for sure. This is big enough that you could do something with it. It's not just a laundry area. You could turn it into a garden. You could turn it into a uh, play area. You could put tables out there. Number of things. You have a breezeway on the one side, so you get air throughout the house. Uh, laundry space, of course, is outside. Decent sized public spaces, but nothing huge. We have the bathroom here. 
pretty good size, decent layout. Uh, not as deep as we see some places, which is a bonus. Uh, the super deep bathrooms are not ideal. Now, the bedrooms in this house, they are smaller than we saw in the apartment yesterday, for example. They are serviceable. This one has a built-in closet area. The other two do not. Uh, this one has the window on the side of the house. And uh, they are very small bedrooms, I must say. They're they're just not they're they're big enough. You can put a bed in there. You can you can make them work, but you're getting quite small bedrooms. This is the middle one, but even the the back one, uh, because the bathroom is after it in the layout of the house, uh, those two only have windows to the side. This front one would be the master. I believe it's slightly larger, and it has the windows facing forward and to the side. You're going to get much better airflow and light in that room, so uh, far and away the best room of the house. Now, the house itself, small, serviceable, but remember, this is a rental unit. You know, $200 a month, this is about the value of what you're able to get for that, and especially if you're looking for something that's going to have an office, maybe a two-bedroom with an office. This could be really good. The public spaces are a little bit small. That is my biggest complaint, I think, and only one bath, uh, but that's not not terrible. Uh, but small house, $200 per month, great neighborhood, uh, good outdoor space front and back uh, with decent views. Uh, the lot beside it is empty, uh, so that's just trees and grass. Um, nice neighborhood you can see there. And then a shot down the street just so you have an idea of where we are put it in context. For me personally, I'm going to say that the apartment is the better of the two. I think that the value is better. Of course, it is less expensive and the bedrooms are bigger, but there's only two. If you need three, it's not going to meet your needs. If you want to stay in the loan house, it's not going to meet your needs, but I prefer it quite a bit. I feel that it's the higher end of the two given the price points and all the other factors, but both are great value. If this house meets your needs, especially you don't need a big bedroom, maybe you need a small office, this could be really nice. Um, you have enough room for guests. If you have kids, there is some room for that. Like you've got a lot you could work with with this house, that front little area to put your car. It's fantastic. The views are nice. It's so quiet. If you're looking for that quiet life with beach access, honestly, this is going to be a hard value to beat. I want to point out that this one is still available. Yesterday, we looked at that apartment. That was only uh, temporary. Someone is moving into it very soon, so you cannot actually get that one. However, there are others that will, I assume, come up on a regular basis. Uh, so, you know, if that's something you're interested in for a long term, paying attention and waiting it out is an option. And certainly, we know people that uh, have access to those. So telling someone that there's someone who wants to be on a waiting list would be very easy. Wink, wink, should anyone be interested, right? This house is the same person. They showed it to us because we were at the other and they're like, wait, do you want to see a house too? So we walked right over. We, we weren't expecting to see this house, uh, but I think it's a, it's a great find. And I think for my audience, it is a really good option. For those of you who have said, I'm really interested in a place, but I don't have to be on the beach, but I'm really interested in the beach. This one is sweet, especially if you do not drive. If that's who you are, this fly is driving me crazy. If that's who you are, you don't drive, but you want to be able to get to the beach, but you don't need to live on the beach and you want to save money. I don't know how you're going to reasonably beat this. Can you get a few dollars cheaper? Obviously, the apartment yesterday shows that you can. Can you move out of a super desirable neighborhood like San Mateo and be in something that costs less, like the, the full-on barrio of Sutiava, like Beren in the north of Sutiava? Uh, yes, absolutely. Those options do exist, but the amount of savings you're potentially going to get can only be so large. You're looking at smaller properties, less finished or whatever. And yes, you'll save some money because you have to walk farther to get to the bus or whatever. Uh, so they're going to come with negatives and, and generally for expats, they're not going to be worth it. If you are from the barrio and you're close to family or you're, you're really looking to save every penny and you're not interested in taking that bus to the beach every day or whatever, then those other barrios may work out great. Some of them are fantastic with beautiful houses. I love walking around and doing those barrio tours. So I'm not saying that they're not a good option. Absolutely, they can be. But this area of San Mateo, I think, is really specifically well suited to the type of people who are drawn often to my show. Obviously, people watch this show have a tendency towards Leon in general and often find us because of the Pona Loya and Las Panitas beaches because uh, we have a hotel there and, and we work there, a hostel there, I should say, um, and uh, uh, which is a form of hotel. For those who don't know, hostel is a de designation of hotel. Uh, it refers to what amenities and stuff that you have. It is not like in the U.S. where people think it means shared rooms. It can be, for sure. Shared rooms are hostels, not hotels, but 
not all hostels have shared rooms and certainly the majority of hostels have private rooms anyway uh so that is uh that is my take on that house certainly if it's something you're interested in reach out through the channel we will uh we are not real estate agents we do not get any commission we do nothing of the sort we will simply connect you with the kind people who were willing to let us see the house uh, and we were showing it to someone who was considering it he ended up taking a different house uh, than that one but this one was one that certainly we were all impressed as an option so that is uh that is the house in san mateo I've been spending a lot of time with Ozzy over the last week working on our plans for travel that we have coming up. And I think we're at a point where I'm going to be booking flights within within the time frame. I should already have the flights, hopefully by the time you see this video. Uh, so maybe tomorrow I'll have a little bit of update for you. But between a bunch of things that we have going on, one, we accidentally became uh, illegal immigrants. So that's an adventure we will talk about in the near future. Uh, but um, uh, Ozzy and I are uh, very strongly planning on a trip to South America. This is actually really complex because he actually was um, uh, defrauded of his life savings in the last few weeks. So he lost everything and he's dealing with his banks trying to figure that out and lawyers and it's just consuming his life and that's going on as we try to plan this trip. So <laughs> my weather completely changed. We had the power go out, my camera overheated and a huge rainstorm moved in. It's actually on the early side. It should be nice and bright out here and it's not. So we are uh, planning this trip to South America and we've had to make a bunch of changes. So we've put in a bunch of time trying to figure out exactly what we need to do to be able to do this trip. And originally we were gonna be flying, I was gonna be flying into Bolivia, joining him and doing a trip down to Ushuaia in Tierra del Fuego. But talk some sense into him, that is too far to go. I looked up flights and figured out that it looks like I should be all good to fly into Buenos Aires, Argentina. From there, I'm gonna take a hopper flight to Salta, Argentina, which is up in the north, right on the Bolivian border. He's gonna drive with his dad, who's excited about doing a drive with him for about four days to get down from his home in Cochabamba, down to Salta, where he's going to pick me up, or I'm gonna be waiting for him or whatever. We're gonna do a little bit of time in Salta, hang out, because that's supposed to be a cool city. It's the tourism city of Northern Argentina. Argentina. We're then gonna head south just a little bit into the first wine country. Of course, we're gonna stop there and then we're gonna drive like mad to get to Mendoza. So it's a big stretch of north central Argentina that we're gonna drive through, but skip over more or less. This is our current plan, but I think it's pretty solid. Once we're in Mendoza, we're gonna spend some time there. That is a major tourist site, especially for those of us that are wine lovers. From there, it's time to cross the Andes. This is all by car in his SUV over to Santiago, where we're gonna hang out. That is the capital of Chile in the major city. We're gonna go to Valparaiso on the coast, down to Concepcion, possibly a little bit farther south, as far south as uh, Puerto Montt, Pero, uh, but that is going to switch in Spanish. That is gonna be the, the farthest southern point that we're gonna consider of the entire trip. We're not gonna go any farther south than that and maybe no farther south than Concepcion, but most likely at least a little bit farther south. That'll give us a good chunk of central Chile. We're gonna skip the desert area in the north and have a really good idea of what um, urban Chile and the main uh, areas are like. Of course, there's just tons and tons of Chile that we're not gonna be able to see. It's unreasonable because it's so long and narrow. It's not like we can get to very much of it in a reasonable amount of time, but we're gonna get a really good Chilean experience and see all the major cities. From there, cross the Andes again and across the Rio Negro region of Argentina over to the coast where there is supposed to be a really cool island area uh, on the Atlantic. You're going to try to see that from there head north to Buenos Aires. Definitely going to spend some time there off to Montevideo in Uruguay, uh, then back to Buenos Aires, then driving up north to take the bridge over the Rio Plata into Uruguay in, in the more northern regions, drive across it, enter Brazil, go up to Porto Alegre and Floriopolis, do that area, then cut across Brazil to Foz do Iguazo, the largest falls in a waterfall in uh, South America. From there, it is into Paraguay and west to Asuncion, the capital, where I'm told there's not a whole lot to do. It's not a tourist center, but it does have amazing soup. Uh, so we're told we gotta try that. Um, going to probably, at this point, we really don't know. Are we gonna go back into Argentina because it has better roads, or are we gonna stay in cheaper and easier to deal with Paraguay, but with rougher roads, and head towards Bolivia. Once into Bolivia, we're gonna 
that's where we're absorbing our extra time. Uh, Alan and Anna are supposed to be coming down and meeting us there. We're gonna be going to Cochabamba, which is Ozzy's hometown, and north up to La Paz, which is our largest office for our company. And we're gonna be visiting there. Hopefully gonna hit Lake Titicaca, maybe take a ferry, do some stuff up there before getting a flight out of somewhere in Bolivia to head back to Costa Rica. I'm gonna be doing all this from Costa Rica. Now our logistics before that, uh, this is where it goes into our illegal immigrant thing. It turns out we missed one of our renewals for our visa here. So we've overstayed quite significantly, me and the kids. And uh, we're technically for a little over a month Illegal, illegal immigrants here in the country. We paid a lot of fines for that. And we have to be out of the country for a few days uh, starting in late September. So only a few weeks from now, about three weeks from now. Our plan, because that comes right up to Dominica and my anniversary, is that we're going to take the kids, we're gonna to go to Costa Rica, and we're simply going to do a full-on Costa Rican vacation. We did this last year, about a year ago, had a really good time, but this time we wanna do different things in Costa Rica. Obviously, it's an entire country, so a week here, week there, works out great, you see different things. Uh, last time we did San Jose, did the urban stuff and saw the city, which honestly, that's likely to be my favorite. I really had a good time, but there's a lot of wild stuff like zip lining and wilderness areas and sloth sanctuaries and uh, volcanoes and all kinds of cool stuff that Costa Rica is really known for. It's ecotourism, so we're looking to go do some of that stuff and hang out and see that for about a week, do our anniversary there, at which point I will drive Dominican and the kids or take them by taxi or whatever up to the border-ish, get them uh, off into Nicaragua where Paul will pick them up and I will head back to San Jose where the plane will be waiting, just a public plane, not a special plane, uh, to take me to South America uh, and start that journey. I have to get back in time for Liesl's Quintinera, which is in late November. So it's going to be a huge epic road trip. We figured 10 to 12,000 kilometers now that we cut off about 10,000 kilometers of additional driving. It is going to be huge. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be filming, of course, the whole time. We're already making plans for what cameras are going, how we're doing it, all kinds of stuff. It is a lot of logistics, but we spent a bunch of time planning that, and I'm glad I'm finally at a point where I can tell you guys what the general plan is. We think that's going to be solid at this point, at least where I'm flying into, where we're flying out of, and what we intend to do when we get into the car. And of course, everything's going to go haywire once we start driving. It is an insane amount of distance. There is so much to go wrong, both with the car and with an election happening while we pass through Argentina. And uh, there's just a lot, a lot of potential uh, changes to happen, but it looks like a truly exciting trip. So I'm looking forward to that um, a lot. This has been a big adventure that I've been looking forward to for years, uh, and, and we're finally able to make it happen. And a lot of this is mountain driving and super long distance driving that Dominica can't do. So this is my doing all the stuff that Dominica can't do road trip in South America. So I get a bunch of that under my belt so that later when we're ready to go back, we know a bunch of like, oh, Chile is going to be great for the family, or Argentina is going to be good for this, and where to go and how to fly and all that. And really the flights into Argentina right now are so cheap that that is super accessible if that's something we decide to do and right now we're in the process of making our decisions about what we're going to do for our travel for 2024 and currently really high on that list due to an ongoing war in Europe right now uh, a major uh, upheaval in northern Africa and the fact that she was just in Southeast Asia we're looking most likely either at Southeast Asia again or uh, that we're more likely holding off because there are places we really want to do when the kids are just a little bit older, like China. Um, but we really wanted to do Egypt, but that is in uh, right bordering a war zone and a bunch of things that we wanted to do while in Egypt we can't do. So we're waiting on that to see if that situation changes so that we can combine more with that particular trip. Uh, so Africa is off. Uh, our, our agenda this coming year. So South America is looking very likely, of course, Europe is always a possibility, um, but South America is the current reigning, like it's just really affordable, it's really easy. We know we're here now, we know we can do it, we know the flights are good. We've got a million places we wanna go. The kids don't know anything about South America, really, it's perfect. So that is our most likely upcoming target for 2024, is some combination of Colombia, Argentina, and Chile. And so we will see what we decide to do, but those are the ideas. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Scroll down. If you're on a TV, go to a computer, scroll down, say hi, ask whatever. Leave your comments. Where have you been in South America? Where do I need to go? What? Look at the loop that I said. See what you can figure out that's on that path, or more or less. Uh, are you on that path? Do we need to stop by and see you? Uh, share with your friends. Tell your family, and I will see all of you tomorrow.